Ron DeSantis was invited to go to The View. Mm -hmm. Um, His team said, this is Brian Griffin, DeSantis' deputy press secretary, tweeted that the Florida governor had received an invitation to be on the show. They said we would be honored. This is what they said. I hope you're having a good summer. I'm sure. (laughs) I'm reaching out to invite Governor Ron DeSantis to be our special guest on The View next season, which starts September 6th. We would be honored to have him join us in studio sometime in the fall. DeSantis is who does not play. I love him. He's a boss. He just does it. He's like, I'm sorry, I'm not playing your game. Came back and said, "Um, which of the below statements from the host of The View do you recommend our team consider when deciding if the interview will be a genuine pursuit of truth or worth the time? And then he includes these comments. I think he's a fascist and a bigot, Sonny Hostin said in June. You're just sort of calling Governor DeSantis a negligent homicidal sociopath because that's what he is, Joy Behar said. Wow. And he was like, I'll pass. So I see this. I see this. And, you know, I say good on him. The View used to be a place where you used to be able to go when Barbara Walters was in charge. It used to be a place where you could go and have a real discussion. Mm. You know, she prided that show on differences of opinion being acknowledged at the table on a respectful discussion. You can go back and watch tape where I think there was one episode where Bill O'Reilly was on and Whoopi and Joy walk well, out uh, and she's like, get back here. Yeah, what are you You're doing? not going to do yeah, that exactly. to a guest. So, talk? But that's not what's going on anymore. Well, I mean, you saw not. my appearance there. They shouted me down like as misinformation. They completely set me up. Of course. So at this point, Good on him. I feel like that show needs to decide if they if they want people to come on who have differing views, they have to act with respect. And if they're not going to act with respect, then they're going to get answers like this. And this is what people should say. Sorry, not interested. I'm not looking to be set up. Yeah. Exactly. What do you think? I, I, for, well, first of all, love that show. I Every day I'm what? No, I don't. I'm, I'm actually, I'm fu- that, You're a big Joy Behar fan. You, yeah, I, I love her. And I first <laughs> of all, I think you should have, because you just said it, you should have your own spinoff and call it a different view, a different view and it's mm-hmm. the complete opposite of what they're doing. I have zero respect for them because it's not, like you said, when Barbara Walters was there, it, everybody had a view and everybody talked and we worked through and whatever. Now, it's just like, like the media, they're political activists. It's just whatever the left wants them to say. They're saying, and I don't respect any of them because have you ever seen any of them jump off and go to anybody else's show? Have you ever seen any of them Mm -hmm. anywhere else sitting there and being interviewed? Never. You never, because they have to be in that little bubble. They have to be in that little room. All the audience, all those guests, you know, they're all set up to go after people like you. Anything that they say is truth and is gold, and they get, like Bill Maher's audience, who I know Bill Maher I love because he's he's shifting, but those audiences, if you don't think or act or respond how they respond, they they shun you down and they boo your ass. Yeah, you know I, mean? I just I just feel like Ron DeSantis is perfect because you know, yo, he's not stupid. He's the real woke. Yeah, he knows what they were trying to do, bro. And the fact that he has those links of you talk shit here, you talk shit here. You want me there? Like you don't you don't think that we know. The setup is happening. And you know, what's sad to me is I used to be the biggest advocate of like, go into these spaces, have these conversations, change hearts and minds. Like you never know who you'll reach. Like my experience there for the most part was pretty good when I worked there. Um, I had a few days that were odd. Interviewing Hillary Clinton was an odd day. Um, There were like just days where I felt like, I I felt like there was panic around what I could and couldn't say on a couple of days. But for the most part, I felt like I sat down, I said what I had to say. And when I left, Many of the audience members were like, Jed, you made me think like I didn't I didn't like you at first, but, you know, I thought about things in a different way, which to me was like I did a good day's work. So I am a fan generally of like get out of your comfort zone. Stop preaching to the choir. The challenge is when it's set up, when it's. It's not when they don't have an interest in an actual conversation and they're just there to mock you, to set you up, then that's just there's no there's no advantage then to doing that. Like, Mm -hmm. why am I going to go to be abused? Mm -hmm. You know, so I think I think it's kind of a moment where they're going to have to figure out who they are. I don't think he's going to be the last person that says that. You think Trump would go on there? You think Trump would go on there? I think Trump would go on. Yeah. Um, like, is that explode. good or bad? Like, do you think he should have went just to get those difficult? Actually, you know what? Now, I don't know. I really think they're going to have a hard time booking real, genuine conservatives who want a discussion. Yeah. Who aren't there just for like that moment that, I mean, I went on. People say to me, well, why did you go on? I I had a full pre-interview with them. So yeah. I they knew what I was, we talked through the mandates, like mm-hmm. an hour long pre-interview. So I was like, 
I want to have this discussion. They have a big audience. I want to show people why I'm not getting this vaccine and why there's a whole segment of the population that's not just going to comply. Like I wanted that to be heard. It was Beautiful. a legitimate, I show up, it's like, bam, misinformation. I don't get to say, yeah. it's like ridiculous. Horrible. But I think there are good, there are people who now are seeing that it's not an opportunity. It's not an opportunity to have a conversation or change hearts. You can't do that with people who, are, are trying to 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 like make a point out of you, so I would tell him not to go. I would tell Trump to say, "I'm sorry, but no, thank you." Like, Don't. if it's going to be like this, they decide to change the way they treat people. They decide to have a respectful exchange of ideas. But isn't that go. one of the reasons why people like Trump because he does do things that are going to be like, "Whoa, like what?" Like he's going to take on this challenge, you know? Like, like to me, I look at that as like that's somebody who's not scared. To get canceled per yeah. se, um, so like I don't know. I think I don't think it's even about canceling though. I think people are tired of giving them ratings mm -hmm. for mistreating. Like I'm not going to give you the benefit of me showing up if you're going to be disrespectful. Because those are clicks. Because they want that. That's beat. They what want, it's down yeah, to. Yeah, now to Trump it. could go. I will say this. My disadvantage was that I was not in person. They wouldn't let me into the studio even with a negative COVID test. Had I been on that set, oh, they would have been in trouble. I love it because. I, <laughs> I and they that. know it. They know it. That's why they didn't have me on the set. They would have been in trouble because I don't back down. I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And I was following the science yeah. and they weren't. If you like the short clip, you can catch another one here or you can catch the full episode right here.